hopefully I'll be able to film walking around town with not too sure the rules not been for about a year. Am I allowed to film while I'm walking around here? Thank you very much. Okay. So, a bit of an update. Like we're not going to have a chance, we're going to walk around here about having a look at Richard Townley. And the Townleys. Um, Oh, do you know what? I'm going to have to take my time because of this Covid look. We've got uh, markers on the floor, so you, you can still go for um, a walk around. You just have to mask. Um, you have to wear a mask. You have to follow the things. But you're still welcome to come and enjoy it. I've, oh, I've been waiting months to get back in here. I didn't think they were going to let me film then, to be honest. Uh, but the lady who just gave me the map was really nice and uh, they don't have a problem with filming in here. I'm tag, tag town in it later. I've had a look at this here before, I'll get that for a safe. I don't know if I'm gonna see what's gonna go on in here. If it's one way I can't, I can't, I can't follow both hands. I don't understand that. Um, to be honest, I already know what I'm looking for. I can't have a view. I'm looking for, um, I like the Egyptian stuff, me. I know this, uh, there's a mummy in here. Um, an Egyptian, oh, look at the animal heads. I can't remember seeing them. Obviously, I'm from Burnley, so if you're from Burnley, you've probably been in here a good couple of times yourself, like I have. Um, there's a map, I'll put a picture of that in the group. Um, like, if you haven't been in here, you need to come and have a look around here, because I swear to God, this building is absolutely amazing. And to be fair, I don't know if I'm allowed to touch stuff. Please do not touch the furniture. Right, so I'm not allowed to touch stuff. Oh, I wish I hadn't read that sign now. I could have like, touched a few bits. I'm like, oh, I've got away with it. That looks a bit like a bailing press, but it's for fabric and not um, pewter. Pewter is an attractive metal which has been used for the production of household and other items in Britain since Roman times. It is now only consistent mostly of tin. You've got to look pop a little bit straight away into the Egypt bit. Like I didn't think I didn't think we'd get here that quick. Let me take a picture of this. This um I get too much glare off the cupboard. Um because of the lights. I'm gonna have a close look at that armadillo in a minute, like oh that's a real one. I'll try to stuff the armadillo. Um William Taylor. Uh, his work took him all over the world from 1908 to 1913. He sent exhibits back to Town Hall. In 1908, he worked the Jelen River scheme in Kashmir and sent back paper mache metalwork and embroideries. I haven't got my torch. Oh, have I got my torch? I don't, I don't know if I can go around shining lights. I don't know where you're going to be able to see this stuff like, look at that monkey with a heart. <laughs> That's actually the world's smart Garvin, I've not seen that before. Look at these little Egyptian idols all around here. Um, this is sarcophagus. There's the bottom of it, there's the mummy from inside it, there's the top of it. I can look. You can see it. On camera. And if you can't, like you know it's there now from this video, if you haven't been here before, so come and have a look at it with your actual eyes. Um, let's copy a look at these up because this is what I like. Look, look at the mummy, um, with all the paintings on. Look, look, look at the bandages and like the corroded feet poking out of the bottom of it. 
Right, that, that, that's the actual mummy inside the uh, bandages and stuff. Right, there's, there's a body in that. Oh, these little ones. No, I see who's in charge of keeping ten shabatis at work. These little idols. Shh, I'm going to keep digging and looking and rooting until I find something that kind of quality. Look how similar these are. They look like they were carved by the same person, that. Funerally figures. Oh, but. Oh, the look of a knife holder. Japanese, I'm going to say, I'm going to change that from Chinese to Japanese. It's got a missing tooth. is a different way around to that. I feel like I could have potentially gone the wrong way. That's been bricked up that way, mate. You can see the little lats. Oh, there's a bear. There's the bear. Oh, let me get a look at these pictures before I go down to the bear. Paintings, although there's a lot of paintings around, I definitely have not got the battery power to um, show you all the paintings uh, but I know it, that the gallery is on the other side of the building where I'm presuming like the jewel in the crown um, paintings are going to be William Townley of Townley all the Townleys obviously you know your Burnley history you know that Townley family like massively important who started it all who were the first one main one I get up to the top Bar Hingus, first dean of Warley. Robert, successor to Henry. Books look old as well. I mean, I don't even know what to take photographs of as well, to be fair, because there is just that much stuff in here. Right. Oh, I hope there's going to be a mining section. There has to be a mining section. Don't tell me there's not a mining section in here. I can't actually remember. I haven't been here for like a year or two. Like it has all changed. Um, I'll just have a little walk around and find something that piques my interest. Star, the British War Medal and the Victory Medal, so that England must be the Victory Medal. French, British War Medal, replica, replica, Victory Medal. Also, the Victory Medals are real if they've marked the other ones as uh, replicas. Victor Smith, Victor Kent, Lou Burn with his family when his father was appointed Chief Constable. Victor also served as a police inspector in the Blackpool Police Force. He was commissioned as second lieutenant in the 5th Battalion, 1-5th Battalion, East Lancashire Regiment, and landed at Galap Galapagos. 
victor was killed in action and was posthumously awarded the Victoria Cross, Britain's highest military award, in December 1915. I wonder if this is his then. Let's have a look if this is his stuff. It is, this is his stuff. No way. That's going to be his stuff. Thomas Whitton was born in West Vaughan. He enlisted in the Coldstream Guards in 1915 and served till 1919. Thomas was awarded the Victoria Cross for his actions at the Battle of Pilkham Ridge, 31st of July 1917, at the start of the Third Year Peace. The Pass and Dale campaign. His citation published in the London Gazette reads, with his name incorrectly spelt as Whitton, for most conspicuous bravery when during an attack, an enemy machine gun machine gun was seen to be en enfilading, I've not heard that word before, the battalion on the right, Private Whitton, with, on his own initiative, immediately worked his way from shell hole to shell hole through our own barrage, rushed the machine gun and under heavy fire captured it together with an officer and two other ranks. This bold action was of great assistance to the battalion and undoubtedly saved many lives and allowed the whole line to advance. Thomas's Victoria Cross and watch. Oh, is your watch there? Oh, his watch is there. We were acquired by Townley Home Museum and a portrait of him was paid for by the corporation. This is also in Townley. Oh, I might have already missed it, but We'll, we'll keep an eye out for that. A plaque dedicated to Thomas was laid by local man Brian Hurst at the site of the action in Belgium 2015. Nice. So these guys here, Alfred Victor Smith and Thomas Whitton, these are their uh, actual bits. They've both got the Victor the Victor in the middle. From, why is he a French cross there? What, what? Both local lads. There's anything else? We're only on 12 minutes, so I'm going to get to film for a little bit longer. Is any more war stuff in here? I can't be the whole war stuff. Who's um, Thomas Whitton? That's pretty similar to my name, to be fair. Um, Burnley born Hugh Colvin as well. Why have you not got a plaque on him? Um, what's that football team? First one maybe. I'll walk around this room fully before we leave it and go to a, a new room. Try to find something else that piques me interest. Um, is that a metal sign? That's a metal sign. That's a real metal sign, that's not a recreation, that. Let me get a picture of that. Ah, do you know what, for pictures it's a lot of light glare. Like, I don't know if that's going to come across on camera, like what it does on the pictures. I think these mouses, I seem to remember, there's a bit of a thing going like, maybe for kids or something, they're all in the vault, you know, like in mad little places. We'll see if we can spot some, like, see how that bird's up there, look, on torn up corner of the cabinet, like there'll be sneaky little mouses in places eating cheese and stuff and I'll have a little look out for them what's this? I don't understand what this is Burnley means business, we most certainly do I think this is just like a selection of old little bits, look at them what are they? sweet jars yeah, sweet jars, wow um, Stony Hall, 1935. Just trying to get a bit of a look at the picture. Um, if all them fireplaces are stolen, it's still going to be. Right, do you know what I mean? I think a lot of places have got uh, ones made out of plaster. Imitation ones. Look at this, this is more war stuff. This looks a bit more World War one is all this. Oh no, I was wrong, look. War Savings Campaign 1944, that's World War II. Black out black. The light in service. What's all this stuff in it? Is this real stuff from the Second World War? Clothing book, Nellie Dawson, 2 Bracewell Street, Burnley.
1942 to 1943. This is war stuff, maroon coupons, clothing coupons. Wow. Imagine getting like a little book, book, of, book of them to go get clothes and stuff. That's mad that. Um, the old Burnley room. Sort of bought there. Let's go see which room we're going to go into now. Let's do get a choice. Um, I don't have to say which way one way is, but look, it's bare. It's going to be a real bear, I presume. I could be wrong. Do you know what I mean? I am like 10 times a day. Check I'm following the correct arrows. Ah, oh, badges! Um, Shut me some of badges out before we start this nature room. Obviously, we're going to put the badges for a minute. I've seen some of these out in the wild. I don't know if you've seen the video I shared before. Huh? But a couple of these like, walked up to me. I went to get the good camera to film them, but they ran off, they got a bit scared. Like, just, to be fair, look at the claws on them. I was going to stroke one, I'm glad I didn't. That's the fox, probably seen loads of them. Let's, um, let's walk around to the left, because we've got to go out that other door there. There's a camera new animals there, there's all of them in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eighteen, eighteen animals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, look at the bats. That one can't be real, with the big ears. What's that? That one. Is active at night, feeding on insects and moths which are caught or put from trees. Little voles. Don't get to see many of them out in wild. That can't be an English rabbit for the size of that. And a uh, yellow greyish. Larger than a rabbit. No doubt you can see one of them. What's that? A woodcock. A woodcock. I'm glad they've got. I've seen some butterflies in that one down there. I'm glad they've got that. Is that a treasure chest? It would be. How old is it? No, actually sure. It's probably from about the early 1600s. It's metal. Um, somewhere there's a key for it and I don't know where it is. Cause oh, it's is locked. it locked? It's locked. But inside on the um, lid, underneath the lid, will be a very complex contraption of locks and things. Oh, like a, yeah, like a puzzle box? Yeah. They've had padlocks through there, but there's also a keyhole there, as well as there. So it... Oh, so you weren't getting in it if you weren't supposed no, to. No, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes what they did was two different people would have had the keys. 
So you'd have to have the two people together in order to open it. Send them separate as well. Make, don't don't send sure them with one it. One person didn't nick it. So um, yeah, it would have been fair. They used to move from home to home. Has it always been out? I've been in here quite a few times and uh, I don't think I've noticed that before. No, it has. It's always well, been out, yeah. I've only been here about 18 months, but it's been here all the while I've been here. Um, someone donated it. Somebody donated it? I'm not, I'm not sure myself exactly where it came from. That was nice of them, weren't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's very, very heavy. Oh, I bet it is. It looks heavy. <laughs> Looks very well so built yeah, as well, to be fair. The, um, all the valuable stuff in there, it wouldn't, wouldn't just have been plate and what have you, it probably would have been books as well. Oh yeah, because they were very valuable to yeah, them back then. Yeah, yeah, because they weren't made on the land. What's, uh, how come it says 1628 up there? Is that when the... Uh, it, well, the, the town where that had this wing built in yeah. the 1600s, that's the date of his death. Just to commemorate that. Yeah. yeah. And originally, when they built this wing, it was only as wide as this room, and that's the window. Looking outside. Looking outside, and then about a hundred years later, they extended it that way, so they turned it into a, a cupboard. So that woodwork there with that glass that used to be an external window. Yeah. Wow. So. It's strange how it's in the same style as the, uh, you know, these ones on the thing, how it's yeah, all diamonds. Yeah. You'd I'm think they'd have the same... I'm not sure, I'm, I'm assuming that... It's, um, it's the same. It's a lovely dining room anyway, isn't it? Nice. <laughs> Do you eat your dinner in here? It's only. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll keep walking around, have a nice day. Yeah, thank you. This is more Egyptian stuff. British textiles, the Wally Abbey vestments, no, nope. this is of a, a priest or a something, I'm not going to go in the correct way, priest garments, very, very fancy. Oh, I'm going to have to change a finger in the battery because this is a chapel and we're going to have to have a little natter, I know what's just in there and down to the side and it is amazing. On. I can't turn the light on but if you do come in here you need to look at this door into the chapel obviously it would have been a massive thing and um, the carvings on it are brilliant but if you think that's a nice carving all oh, these are nice carvings look at that like even these chesters these ones say don't touch the furniture yeah please do not touch the furniture um where's the spiel where's the writing about it let me tell you about it because i know i can remember this is old this is old and it's from somewhere else it got gungia the town altarpiece when you look at it oh, i read that this Flemish carved oak, the red os, the upper part, was made in Antwerp around 1500. So 1500, it's over, uh, it's over 520 year old. It was brought to Townley in the late 18th century by Charles Townley, the collector. It was removed in the late 19th century to the convent of Notre Dame in Sussex and purchased by Burnley Borough Corporation in 1969. It contains six larger scenes from the life of Christ with smaller scenes from the Old Testament. It lacks its painted doors and the altar itself is probably early 19th century. So, that is still a 500 year old wood carving. Like the, I don't know if it's going to come up on camera, but the intricacies in there, like in, I don't even know how you do that. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know how, how, how you would carve that. Do you know what I mean? I know you'd carve something like this, but I don't know how you'd do that. Um, I probably want to look in these boxes, but you're not allowed to touch, you're not allowed to touch the furniture. A 1601. So this chapel door is probably 400 years old itself. 
if the one round there, if they did that when it died. Um, oh, where did she say the external wall were then? Um, been in here before, me and my friend working for secret passages. And um, we thought we'd found one here. Looks like some old bars and an old window and a replica head of Colonel Francis Towner. Oh, this is the guy who, uh, this, 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 his head, I think it's in St. Peter's Church now, let me have a read. Francis Towner was executed and his head displayed on the Temple Bar in London for his part in the Jacobite Rebellion of 1745. The aim of the uprising was to overthrow King George the Second, the King of Great Britain, and restore the Catholic Stuart family to the throne. The head was brought back to Townley and eventually deposited in this small cupboard. Oh, so the head's been in this cupboard, this is where the head used to be. Before being removed with the other Townley heirlooms in 1902. So why has the Townley heirlooms been removed? I'll have to, I'll have to ask someone that and get a picture of the head. This, this is the cupboard his head was in. Turn my flash on. I've seen that cupboard before, but I didn't know that his head had been kept in there. I wonder why they kept his head in here. <laughs> he just took a bit of air on top. Hey. Uh, I'll move on now. There's some people walking around behind me. Yeah, they obviously want to get up at the chapel. I might want to go downstairs now. I feel like if I go downstairs, I feel like that'll be me out. Um, I don't want to leave yet. It's a pottery room, although pottery is nice. Um, all the, I, you know what I mean? I'd rather find one of them myself in a river or in a field or somewhere like that. Oh, I've got all scaffolding up. I wonder what's going on here, some sort of restoration work. You're hard to touch these, aren't you? Yeah. A lot of people outside again, it's just like a normal day, it's getting very busy again. Um, the art gallery. I don't remember the art gallery being on this side. Hello. Is I seem to remember an art gallery being downstairs. Is it, like, in, right well, we at the... We have paintings all over the house. Right yes. at the end? Is that not the main gallery? Is this no, the main? this is the main art gallery, but we have paintings all over the house as well. All right, thank you. Uh, where would the painting of the... Uh, when I first came in, there was a there were like a couple of guys war medals, and it said that there was a painting of one of them um, in here somewhere. The painting worked there with the stuff. I presumed it was in one of the galleries somewhere. A painting of India. No, a painting of a war hero. Uh, war hero. Yeah, his portrait. Uh, were, the medals are there. They've got the medals for a couple of guys. Um, Whitham, I think his name was. Oh, Whitton, Yeah, Whitton. yeah. He's in the, on the ground floor, in the military room on the ground floor. Right, is it, is, it, is it a room full of military paintings or is it just nestled in with other ones? Um, there's only a very small room. If you go on the ground floor, you'll find it. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, that's Babylon. No, it's not. It's the Tower of Babel. Do they move the paintings around the building or are they all... Yes, it was about four years before they did a move round. Right, so... Oh, they send them out to other buildings and stuff. What was that, the photograph?
shut the lane. Oh, awkward. Exhibition in preparation. This one, a symph, a symphonian. A picture of the symphonian. Oh, you can't. I can't take pictures of anything. German, 19th century. German engineering. Oh, it must play music. Symphonian, symphony. Yeah, of course it plays music. I'm just having a look at that, that symphonium there. What does that do? Play music? Yeah, it's like a, a big sort of wind up musical box, I suppose, really. It looks really fancy, yeah. doesn't it? looks like a photograph. Uh, let's have a look at the talent picture. Uh, charger. One dollars and sticks was not the left here. Charge of one P each. <laughs> so this comes uh, Charles Town. Is Charles Townley the one who collected everything then? That's is it, is, is right. he the yes, reason he's why? He's a great collector, he travelled all over Europe doing the, the grand tour, which lots of gentlemen in his position did, and sort of buying up everything he saw. Because at that time, Pompeii and Herculaneum were just being excavated and just being discovered. Oh, they were, so it would have been like yeah, a very current. dug up from there, and he, he bought it, and he brought it back to his house in London, and he was a friend of the painter's often, eh? They all knew each other, all the, you know, that they Yeah, were, they were all yeah. friends. That's right. And often he painted him and his collection as if it was all in one room. He couldn't put it all in one room or the floor would have gone through. Um, yes, he painted. And he, he was, Charles was one of the first trustees of the British Museum when it opened. Which one is he? Is he the guy Charles sat on his own yeah, to the Charles right? Was sitting there with a the dog at his feet. That's Charles and sitting with a dog at his feet. He must have had some money. Right. Yes, he, well, he must he, have been a very he, yeah, wealthy man. The town was well wealthy because they they bought estates, you see, and of course they would get the rents from all the farm, the tenant farmers, and if there were any coal mines that they were in, in Townley, they would get some of the money from that. I've been down in some of the coal mines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been going down them. Uh, I've, I've actually been in Townley one. I've been trying to get in tunnels underneath Townley for months. Yeah. Well, there are quite a few in, in Cliviger, which obviously haven't operated for a while now. Yeah, I've, well. I've been looking at the Cliviger ones as well, to be honest. He liked his Greek sculptures, didn't he? His Greek stuff. Oh, yes. Well, you see, it's all going to go from Italy. Now, that's um, the Scobulus, the one with the, the copy there. Yeah. Now, he was dug up, the one in the picture, I believe, was dug up from Herculaneum. Now, he's marble. But apparently, this is what I've read somewhere, he, the Roman one, was actually based on an older Greek one, which was made out of bronze. Is this just a replica? Yes, yes, that's the Where's one. the original one in the painting then, what he acquired? It's in the British Museum. It's in the British Museum? The British Museum, yeah. And what did he do, donate that upon his death, I presume? Um, no, he, when he, um, no, the, he, the family sold them, the family, the, the town the family, he, he, he never married, so he had no family, and the inheritance went to a, an uncle who was just a little bit older than he was, he had, an uncle was only a few years older than himself. Lucky man. Yeah, so he got the, the town the estates and money and everything. But they were very interested in art and antiquities. So more they sold it all estate off. Estate management. So when the government offered them £20,000 for Charles's collection, they, they took it. 
That's why it's all in the British Museum now. Uh, do you know what? I've never been to the British Museum, but it's definitely up there on my list and I can't wait to visit it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for your information. I appreciate your help. You don't go through that way. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> First part of it's almost a thousand year old. Christian Majesty, the King of France. So, that, this is the King of France's. This is the painting part I remember. Um, that's another one of the statues. I've just seen that one upstairs, so we know what that's a copy because the other one's a copy. The original to that is in the British Museum. intended to impress visitors. It acts as a music room and a gallery to display the Tamworth the the family family's art collection. Reflecting their tastes and great wealth. Well it does that. Looks straight out onto the uh, fountain. That piano's gonna be a fancy one as well, isn't it? I seem to remember being more pictures in here, I don't know if they had a bit of a tidy up. Is that a mermaid? It's like a mermaid on the fireplace. Town hall, the red and green regency rooms. The red regency room is licensed for civil weddings, partnership, and baby name and semis. 100 guests. Oh, you can have weddings here. You can get married. You can get married there. Or name your baby. Like, you like. What is it? Oh, what kind of person comes in and names the baby? Right, you must be pretty fancy to do that. Huh? Um, full wine bar. Right. I didn't know you could get married here. This is going to be the red one, this is going to be the green one. So they can both be used. You must be able to have like dinner parties in this one, look. It's all roped off now, but. I do not touch the furniture. Again, looking out onto the gardens, how close to it? I think you can I get. I'll film a bit when I go outside to be honest, because it is really nice out there. Um, let's go and walk upstairs, see what's upstairs, this is what I'm, I'm getting confused a little bit with the one basis, but 
do. I want the best of four in maps. Got all the metal interlaced into the wall. Should be lifted up to show you because I can through the crack I can see like a ladder going down. Oh in fact look, I don't know if you can see down there but so there were secret tunnels down here, eh? you get down here into like a little secret room below and then down there there was another one as well. That's not gonna be four because we are pretty high up here. So, oh bells, look at them. They used to ring like from somewhere on the car. Dressing room. They look a bit like servant bells to me. If I'm totally honest. I carved into the wall. A long gallery. Do you know what I mean? Look at all this wood. Very easy to add secret doors and stuff in them. Very, very easy. I'm doing that so you can look back at a clock. There must have a lot of clocks in here, not even that overly bothered about because there's clocks everywhere. Look at this for a fancy bed. Nice that. Is that a cowbell? I don't even know what a cowbell is, but I feel like that is a cowbell. Um, I still can't touch the furniture. I still can't touch something. I feel, I feel like there's, there's a secret door somewhere in one of these. There's pictures missing out of there. These are must have used to come. Oh, they did look. So where are all these gone? These are all contained portraits. 1605, 1599, 1600. Do you know what? 91 year old in 1690 is very, very good going. That just shows you um, how very well looked after they were. Fanciest headboard I've ever seen in my life. I'm walking around, I'm looking for hinges. Oh, you can walk into one. Get more clocks. Fringe door cupboard. And put it on. <laughs> Look, 
hinges, hinge, hinge, hinge. There's another inch, five more hinges. No, I think let's get the other way. Right, hinge, hinge. There, look, bump. So, this is it, just the window cover. Something behind that. Look at that when I go outside actually, have a look. <laughs> 